Hi there. This is a year two macroeconomics presentation looking at the concept of internal devaluation in the Eurozone. Now this is an interesting topic. The, the idea of an internal devaluation is that a country can become more competitive over time without resorting to a competitive devaluation of the exchange rate. Of course, inside the Eurozone, countries are part of the single currency. They can't necessarily devalue their exchange rate uh, because they're part of that that single currency block. So internal devaluation happens when a country tries to regain their price competitiveness by lowering their unit wage costs and increasing their productivity and not relying on a devaluation or a depreciation of the external value of their currency. So internal devaluation has become very topical and controversial amongst economists when we think about many of the countries inside the European Union particularly southern European countries that have struggled uh, really badly in recent times, including the likes of Greece and Spain, Portugal and Italy. Now, those countries are, are inside the single currency for the moment. They can't devalue within the Eurozone using the conventional means of a currency depreciation, but they can, de they can devalue internally. So here's the question, how can Greece become more competitive in cost sense when it's decided, decided to stay within the euro. Let's have a look first of all at the idea of, of labour costs. This is part of, the, part of the answer. This chart shows labour costs per hour worked in the EU nations in 2014. And you can see there's a big variation in hourly labour costs, right up there to above 40 euros per hour in countries like Denmark and Sweden and France. All the way down to uh, labour costs in Romania, Bulgaria, two of the poorest countries in the EU, where the hourly labour cost is just one-tenth of the level in Denmark. So there is a big variation in labour cost per hour. You see the UK figure there, about €22 Euros per hour. Now, whilst labour costs are important, what's significant is the unit labour cost. And that, of course, takes into account not just how much you're paying people in wages, but also how productive the workers are. So let's move on to the next slide, the next chart. Now, this is an important chart. Let's have a little look at this. This is a classic A2 data response chart. The chart shows an index of relative unit labour costs. Relative, in other words, comparing one country with another. Unit labour costs are labour costs per unit of output. Now, the base level for the index is labour costs in March of 2000. So you can see here that the index is starting off at 100. And then you can see what's happened to unit labour costs over the last 10, 12, 13 years. For example, follow the red line initially, follow Germany. Germany has controlled its unit labour costs very successfully over this period. Indeed, in over some years, the unit labour costs were actually falling. Now, either that's a result of labour costs being fairly stable or that productivity is rising more quickly. So follow the red line. Uh, labour costs in Germany relatively low and flat, but then look at countries like Ireland in green, where the unit labour costs went up by more than 50% from March 2000 to March 2009. Other countries saw a similar increase. Greece is in the yellow there, the yellow with orange, Portugal is the dotted line, and Spain is in purple. So what you saw happening here, everybody, is a significant rise in relative unit labour costs in those southern European countries, plus Ireland. France also saw a rise in, in labour costs, not quite as big. That takes us to kind of March 2009, the start of the recession. Now, why is this significant? It's significant because within a single currency, if you allow your relative unit labour costs to rise much quicker than in other countries, you're going to be losing cost competitiveness. And to a large extent, that's what actually happened in countries like Spain and Greece and Ireland. They were booming economies before the recession, but they allowed their unit labour costs to rise much faster than uh, Germany, which, of course, is essentially the biggest, the anchor country in the European Union. Now, for an internal devaluation to work, you have to bring down your relative unit labour costs. And uh, as you can see, in countries such as Greece and Spain and Ireland, that has happened. 
the relative unit labour cost of production have fallen back quite sharply. As you can see, Germany still edging up a little bit, but a lot of these countries, they have achieved a significant fall in their relative unit labour costs. Now we call this an internal devaluation. But how you get there, how you achieve it, is, is where the controversy is and where economists debate the economic and the social consequences. So how has Greece achieved an internal devaluation? Well, Greece has basically done it by, first of all, deep cuts in wages. This chart shows the average wage in Greece in euros measured at constant 2013 prices. In other words, it's the real wage in Greece. And as you can see, the boom years, wages went up from just over 18,000 euros per year to over 23,000, nudging 24,000. And we get to 2009 here. And now the wage in real terms in Greece has been falling very, very sharply from 23,500 now back to 18,500. In other words, it's back to where it was in 2001. So there has been a depression, a huge slump in real wages in Greece. And this is part of the causation uh, of internal devaluation. One of the causes of devaluation, of course, internally has been that the Greek economy has been in a deep, deep recession. Uh, this data is from the IMF, includes a forecast for 2016 and the latest figures for 2015. And it shows that uh, Greece has basically been in a recession for the best part of six years. And, and we're not just talking about a shallow recession here. We're talking cumulatively of a, of a, of a fall in GDP well in excess, well in excess of 25%. Their economy has shrunk by effectively a quarter. And this, of course, is the controversial, but the Greece has become more competitive in a cost sense. But there's been a cost. The cost has been a huge fall in GDP. And some of that, of course, may be a permanent reduction in their supply side capacity. I think this chart really sums it up for you. This is real gross national income per capita. So that includes, for example, the income flowing into Greece from things like remittances and from overseas investments from Greece and it's in real terms so it's in 2005 US dollars so Greece uh, as you can see here grew fairly slowly in the 1980s but since the 1990s into the 2000 period real per capita income is rising quite strongly up to just over 24,000 US dollars per capita then the recession then the internal devaluation and notice here that now in 2014 the state is real per capita income is back to the level seen before the turn of the century. Effectively, Greece has lost the best part of 15, 16 years of, of increases in living standards. So internal devaluation has come at a huge cost. And of course, another cause of the internal devaluation is unemployment. Greece is the country in the OECD with the highest number of unemployed graduates. Nearly 20% of graduates in Greece are unemployed. Spain obviously has a very high graduate rate as well. Contrast that with a country like Germany, where only 2.5% of graduates in 2013 were out of work. Even better in Norway, of course, which is outside the EU. So one of the consequences of internal devaluation has been a sizable increase in unemployment and a slump in employment opportunities, particularly for Greek graduates. Little wonder we've seen some depopulation as many of the graduates decide to seek employment uh, in other, other European countries and often beyond that as well. And of course, we can't mention Greece without thinking about youth unemployment. The figures here are eye-wateringly high that in 2015, youth unemployment in Greece remains above 50%. Young workers aged between 16 to 24. That is an absolutely staggering economic chart, which has, of course, huge social and, dare I say it, political consequences going forward. One of the consequences, another, so another reason why Greece has achieved internal devaluation is because they have brought down their inflation rate. So falling wages, lots of excess capacity in the Greek economy, you'd expect the inflation rate in Greece to fall. Indeed it has. In fact, in the last three years, there's been some deflation in Greece. Prices on average falling. Well, again, that helps to restore their cost competitiveness, if you think about it that, in those terms. But given the level of debt in Greece, in particular property and government debt, 
deflation makes things particularly difficult for the economy. So this has been a look at the idea of internal devaluation. It's the idea that countries within a single currency zone can become more cost competitive internally by holding down wages and prices and hopefully by lifting productivity. But internal devaluation is a painful process and the human cost of what's been happening in Greece, um, the social consequences, not a lot in addition to the, the fragility of the political ecosystem, is something we have to think about. Often economists don't give too much, don't give enough attention to the geopolitical, social economic consequences of these things. Well, hopefully that's given you a little feel and a flavour for quite a little quirky idea in A2 macro, the idea of internal devaluation inside a single currency area. Lots more videos to come. Thanks for joining me on this one.